Hey co-stars and welcome to the show and this week we are going to be looking at which sci-fi franchise's light speed, or should I say faster than light speed, is the fastest. We're going to look at ships from several different shows and with the help of the internet try and figure out the rough order in which they rank. And just like with a lot of things on the internet, much of this information comes from some nerdy dude in his grandma's basement who claims to know about warp speed or hyperdrive or whatever. This was the ship's hyperdrive rating, class 0.5. That's the wrong clip. Look, I, I wrote in the script, it was, uh, it was Simpsons comics, comic score guy. Y yeah, yeah, play it, play it. Fat sarcastic Star Trek fan, you must be a devil with the ladies. <laughs> anyway, take these as a rough guide rather than absolute truth. And first up, we have Spaceball 1 from Spaceballs. Now, I know that this is a spoof movie, so we won't spend a huge amount of time on it, but the main bad guy ship in that movie is called Spaceball 1, and it's a very long ship. Oh, hey, so in the movie, there is a scene where the ship travels incredibly fast when chasing the space Winnebago. And the ship seems to have just three speeds, light speed, ridiculous speed, and ludicrous speed. Now, according to people on the internet who say that they have read the script, light speed is, well, the speed of light, obviously. Duh. Now, ridiculous speed is supposedly 65 times the speed of light, and ludicrous speed is 1,380 times the speed of light. A speed so fast that the quantum gravimetric distortions reverberating through the subspace dimension create plaid patterns against passing ships. Yeah, that's not true. It's actually the slowest ship in this video. Moving on. Now let's get into the Star Trek franchise. You know, that sci-fi show featuring men in skirts. Slow motion martial arts and a very urgent need for a 24th century Me Too movement. Commander, what are your intentions toward my daughter? Now, ships in Star Trek use warp drive to travel faster than light. Basically, they warp space, compressing it to make it a shorter distance than it actually is. The ship sits inside a warp bubble right in the middle of this area of warped space covered by the ship's warp field. They can thus cover great distances while keeping the ship and crew within normal time and space. And they're a little bit better than other franchises at providing us with actual statistics and information about the speeds of these ships via warp field diagrams. But I mean, they have updated and reconfigured them three times. So in this video, I will use the speeds provided in the Star Trek Voyager technical guide. This book was not released to the public at the time, but instead served as a guide for writers of the show. The book puts the top speed of the Enterprise D, which was warp 9.6, at 1,909 times the speed of light. At that speed, you could cross our solar system in 21 seconds. It would take 23 hours to cover an average distance between nearby stars, but to get to another galaxy, it would take over a thousand years. But according to the Next Generation Technical Manual, that top speed of warp 9.6 was only sustainable for 12 hours because you'd have to shut the engines down to give them a rest, you'd have to refuel, so it may actually even take about double the time to get to another galaxy. Now, the fastest ship we see in the Star Trek TV shows is probably the USS Voyager, and the technical guide lists Voyager's speed at warp 9.975. This was 3,053 times the speed of light. It was actually about 50% faster than warp 9.6 and would put the ship moving at over 2 trillion miles per hour. So Voyager could cross the solar system in 13 seconds, navigate between two nearby stars in 14 hours, and travel to another galaxy in 655 years. Although that would also be theoretical since Voyager 2 was limited to 12 hours at maximum warp and then they would have to dial the speed back and uh, give the engines a rest. And warp cores can be a little temperamental if you drive them too hard. Warp core breach in 50 seconds. So these statistics put Star Trek vessels as the second slowest on our list. 
crossing the galaxy would take decades and flying to another galaxy would basically be impossible. All right, next up we have the Orville. Now, yeah, I know this show is a spoof by Seth MacFarlane, creator of Family Guy. Your entire species is male, isn't it? Probably not a lot of arguments about leaving the toilet seat up and that kind of thing, right? Mocklands urinate only once per year. But it turned out to be a really great show. Somebody put that out! Mortis, prepare to launch all plasma torpedoes simultaneously. Now in the Orville, their faster than light travel is called quantum drive. Do you guys just put the word quantum in front of everything? Yes, and it just sounds great. Now we're never actually given any statistics on how fast quantum drive is, but in the show, Captain Mercer says that the ship is capable of in excess of 10 light years per hour. That means the ship can travel at a speed of 87,600 times the speed of light. That's way faster than any of the ships in Star Trek. It could cross our galaxy in a little over a year and even get to another galaxy in two years. Now, whether the producers of the show actually put any thought into that or not, I don't know, but it comes out as pretty fast. On to the next one, Battlestar Galactica. Ships in this franchise use a jump method for faster than light travel. Three, two, one, jump. Now for this to work, they bend space, but they bend it a lot to the point where it's more like going through a wormhole or just teleporting in an instant. But the number of light years in one jump was limited, so you'd have to make trips in several jumps. That's why you see the Galactica making this trip in several jumps on the animation, whereas the other ships take a smooth journey. But how far can the ship go in one jump, you may ask? Well, people online have estimated that it's between 16 and 30 light years. So when accounting for engine downtime, repairs, etc., people estimate that the ship can travel 1,769 times the speed of light. But that is just for a limited period of time because all that jumping causes corrosion and stress on the hull and eventually the damage will be irreparable. So while we put the Galactica ahead of the Orville, that may only last a few hours and then the Galactica has to stop jumping and do repairs and the Orville actually overtakes and uh, keeps on going. We just don't know. But it was a pretty cool method of faster than light travel and it could even be done within an atmosphere of a planet, which looks really cool. Next up, Star Wars. So we'll take a look at the Millennium Falcon in Star Wars, which is generally thought of as one of the fastest ships, if not the fastest ship in the franchise. Now in Star Wars, they use hyperdrives for their faster than light travel. Basically, they accelerate to close to light speed and then they engage hyperdrive to enter into the hyperspace dimension, which is, uh, yeah, like another dimension of space. But objects in the physical dimension will still cast mass shadows into the hyperspace dimension, which pose hazards. So traveling in hyperspace requires a lot of navigational calculations. So Han wasn't just putting Luke in his place when he said this. Traveling through hyperspace ain't like dust and crops, boy. With hyperspace, you'd often have to take an indirect route to avoid these obstacles. So it's difficult to work out an exact speed, but based on the trip in A New Hope, from Tatooine to Alderaan, or what's left of it, People on the internet have worked out that the Millennium Falcon was traveling between 25,000 and 50,000 light years per day, since the distance between those two planets is 50,000 light years. And, you know, it looks like they took between one and two days to get there. Personally, I like to go with one day, since you don't see them sleep or eat on the ship. They just kind of hang out, play with lightsabers, play holographic chess, etc. So if they're traveling at 50,000 light years per day, that would put their speed at 18,250,000 times the speed of light, which is really fast. They could cross the galaxy in a few days, although in reality it may be longer because like we mentioned, the navigational challenges due to the nature of hyperspace. But it's safe to say that hyperspace and hyperdrive was a lot faster than any of the methods we have seen so far. All right, moving on, Stargate. The Daedalus-class battlecruiser in Stargate was equipped with an Asgard hyperdrive, which actually looks kind of similar to the hyperdrive in Star Wars, but it's incredibly fast compared to ships in other franchises. So this technology was given to humans by the Asgard. And no, not Thor's Asgard. It was given to humans by these cute little guys. Well, he's no baby Yoda, but still lovable, right? No? Oh well. 
With the Asgard hyperdrive, different ships could travel at different speeds depending on how much power they could supply the drive with. The Daedalus class could travel between the Milky Way and Pegasus galaxies in 18 days, which makes it much faster than anything we have seen so far. Remember, those Star Trek ships would take hundreds of years to get to another galaxy. If the ship was hooked up with a zero point module, which is this crystal thing created by the ancients, it could shorten that trip to just four days. So with some rough calculations, the Daedalus class was capable of speeds of around 52,139,000 times the speed of light, or with the zero point module installed, 273,750,000 times the speed of light. It really is one of the fastest ships in sci-fi. But is there anything faster? Well, kind of. In Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, there is a ship called Heart of Gold. And I'm curious, did the designer think up the idea for this ship during his CrossFit workout? It looks kind of like one of those kettlebells. Anyway, the ship had something called Infinite Improbability Drive, which could get you anywhere in the universe, any universe, in basically a second. Except, yeah, like you see in that clip there, the ship did often transform into weird objects, and even the crew and passengers were not immune to this shape-shifting side effect. I think I'm a sofa. I know how you feel. Anyway, it's kind of a joke movie, so I wasn't sure whether to include it or not, but technically it ranks as one of the faster ships in sci-fi, and it's one of very few ships that have a kind of faster-than-light drive where they can basically go anywhere in a second, all right? Similar to Star Trek Discovery's Spore Drive. And you rarely see things like this because it gives the characters too much power. If they can go anywhere, it kind of ruins the challenges in the plot, all right? A little bit like with the Spore Drive, you had to write in story elements stolen from an indie computer game to limit their use, like using a massive tardigrade for navigation. Anyway guys, that is where I'm going to leave it today. Leave your comments below which one was your favourite, or are there any other sci-fi ships that were faster? I'm sure there are, because there's loads of sci-fi franchises out there. Throughout the research of this video, I did get into looking at Stargate and Battlestar Galactica, which are two franchises which I haven't really seen that much of, but it uh, actually got me really interested, so I'm probably going to binge watch Stargate first of all, uh, and then Battlestar Galactica, uh, so do look out for some videos about those in the not too distant future. As always guys, please subscribe if you're new for more sci-fi comparisons and mashups every week, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.